morning. Some great readings today, huh? And these readings, they should make you think. They have a theme. Mutual love and fidelity between God and God's people. In the first reading, the leaders of the 12 tribes of Israel make a choice to be faithful to the Lord as they remember God's liberating power and faithfulness. Second reading, husbands and wives. Third reading, the gospel. While many desert Jesus, finding his teachings too hard, too bizarre, the 12 stay with Jesus, sensing his faithfulness as they declare, you have the words of eternal life. This theme of mutual fidelity presents us with two questions. One kind of should make you reflect a bit. Whom do we serve? And the other calls for a decision. Whom will we serve? Gathered here today as a community, as the people of God, much like the tribes of Israel gathered together by Joshua, we sometimes find ourselves caught off guard when confronted by that question, whom do we serve? Now the answer should be obvious by the very fact we're here, but that's not always the case any more than it was for the tribes of Israel that Joshua gathered. Quite often we find ourselves, even during Mass, feeling a bit overwhelmed from the trials and challenges of the past week or the coming week. Whether it be work, finances, family issues, caring for a loved one, and the list goes on. And the doubt creeps in. Am I serving God or am I serving other gods? When I serve other gods, our energy is soon spent. It's gone. But when we try to serve God and allow God to set the agenda for us, He will provide us with the energy we need, often in the most surprising ways. Remember the manna in the desert? God will provide the resources that we need, but maybe not the extras that we want. Serving God doesn't require us to leave our jobs and other responsibilities and go off to some far off place. Serving God requires us to make a commitment. It requires us to have order in our lives, but also to remember that we are human beings created in the image and likeness of God. We're not machines designed for 24-hour operation. It does mean that we should recognize God as the center of our lives. Our first reading, it records Joshua's words after the death of Moses as he reminds the Israelites of God's fidelity and goodness. And then he presents them with a challenge. Joshua draws a line in the sand. It says, God's on this side. Decide today whom you will serve. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And the people respond positively, and they make their commitment. This should kind of make us think a few things, a little bit of reflection here. This reading, some examples. God will always raise up a leader, an example of faith to show us the way. Remember the words? Here I am, Lord, send me. We should all take some time to reflect and renew our commitment. And we should remind ourselves that serving the Lord requires us to serve in love, to serve others in love as the Lord loves us. Serving the Lord is the single most fundamental choice, choice that we can make as human beings 
because we have a free will to do so. Today's gospel, it ends the six-week cycle from John, the chapter of life. This time, even his disciples are shocked by his command to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Being a disciple is not easy. His words demanded far more than many were willing to give. And they responded, murmuring, grumbling, and then walking away, and only the 12 were left. And then as the uncommitted leave, comes Peter's words of faith. Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of everlasting life. Peter's reply, in effect, says, we can trust Jesus. We can believe his word. We can believe he is looking out for our good. And through the Eucharist, with which this chapter is so closely linked, we come to recognize and accept the challenge to become one with Jesus. And it's not enough for him to come to us. We also have to go to him. When the minister says, the body of Christ, And we respond, amen, which means so be it, or yes. That yes, it's not just an act of faith in the real presence. It's even more. It's a commitment to Jesus and all that he represents. So this brings us back to that decision raised by the second question. Whom will we serve? The choice is ours to make, not only today, but every day. Every time we gather for the Eucharist, when we recommit to the terms of the covenant with God and his community, it is our actions of everyday life that manifest our intentions. Whom will we serve? Self, money, country, culture, or the one true God? The choices are endless, and some have chosen to walk away. But my prayer is that we can all take Peter's words as our words, Peter's faith as our faith, a faith driven by mutual fidelity, a faith that recognizes Jesus has the words of everlasting life. Please like, subscribe, and comment below. God bless you.